these short lectures will be casual, unedited, but important. Important because the information is not included in your textbook or assigned readings. Today's discussion deals with the nature of literature. In this class, you're going to be reading short stories. You're going to be reading a novel. You're going to be reading and watching plays. And you will be reading poetry. All of these forms are considered imaginative literature. And as imaginative literature, they are a form of written art. This means that they are not based on factual or verifiable information, but rather they come from the creative imagination of a person. The purpose of imaginative literature is primarily to entertain. That means that when we read a book, when we read a novel, short story, and we're doing it just to please ourselves, just for entertainment, it is not expected that we're going to provide some type of analysis or seek uh, deeper than what the story has to offer us. But in college and in this course, we don't forget entertainment, but we go beyond that. And the purpose of literature in this class then is also to instruct and to delve deeper into the mysteries of human nature. When we, when we say that the purpose of literature is to entertain, we mean that the literature is designed to engage the reader fully by means of the writer's use of language, the situations that are created, the conflicts, the use of creative tropes, such as metaphors and similes, but to instruct means that we go one step beyond that and that we assume that the writer is also trying to create meaning or effect. Trying to create meaning or effect. And that the writer is also making an observation on the complexities of life and living. Sometimes we say that these are cautionary tales and that these sto stories that are to instruct us on what to do and what not to do in certain situations. To look into the mystery of human nature is a little bit more complex because that means that the literature is attempting or the writer is attempting to explore why people do what they do as a consequence of being human and to fully grasp the, the, the difficulty to do this we can look a little bit into the idea of the mystery. We know that Human nature is what people do as a consequence of being human. But what is a mystery?
A mystery is something that is impossible to understand or explain. According to the dictionary definition of mystery, and part of the word derives from the Greek word mists, and that means initiate a person or to initiate. The initiated people in these old cultures were known to have the ability to see beyond the limits of normal awareness. Some could speak to the gods, and therefore mists were allowed to participate in the ceremonies, in the rituals. To delve into the mystery of human nature implies that a writer has some of these special abilities to be very aware of the human condition and to be very aware of the complexities of human behavior and to be able to take these abstractions and these mysteries and somehow through the literature make them familiar and concrete to the reader. The role of the writer, the job of the writer, is to take the mysterious and make it familiar, to take that which is abstract and make it concrete. For example, we could use the word love as an example of a human um, condition, but it is an abstraction. What is love? You cannot touch it, you cannot hear it, you cannot taste it, but it takes a writer like Stevie Wonder to then take that abstraction and make it concrete by instead of saying, I love you, he will say, you are the sunshine of my life. You are the sunshine of my life. That is more familiar and certainly more concrete. In the first slide, I stated that literature is a form of written art. The word art is intimately linked to the idea or the word artificial. That is not to be disparaging uh, in any way of the literary experience, but rather to indicate that literature is made by people. It is a product of the imagination of people. A poet um, once wrote, uh, poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. And I have never met a novelist or a poet who could make a tree. If literature is the production um, of the imagination of people, then we can take literature and define it and classify it and categorize it. And therefore, we have the popular genre of literature. Genre means type. And the four popular genre of popular literature are the short story, the novel, poetry, and drama. Each genre has certain characteristics that make it what they are. 
For example, Edgar Allan Poe tells us that a short story uh, should be read in one sitting, uh, whereas a novel uh, should not be read in one sitting, but should provide a sustained experience that controls the passage of time. In this class, we will be covering these four genre, mainly the short story, the novel, drama, and then poetry. When we are analyzing a, a, a text, uh, a piece of literature, it is important to know the approach that we are taking in that analysis. What questions are we um, asking of the literature? What do we want to discover as we do the analysis? There are many critical approaches to literature, and in this class we, were, we will be covering four. The formalist approach, or formalistic approach, the historical or topical uh, approach, the moral intellectual approach, and the reader's response um, approach. Formalist criticism is the most popular approach. Um, many of our ACC students uh, do that in composition too where you consider the elements of fiction or the structures, and that is what setting, tone, um, point of view, character, all of those are the structures of the work, and how the writer uses these structures, shapes these structures to create meaning um, or impact. Historical criticism uh, considers when the novel or the poem or the play was written and how it may have been shaped, uh, influenced by cultural, social um, events of the time when it was published. That plus how the people of that time would have received the, the story or the novel, how they would have responded to the novel. After that, historical analysis considers, has that changed? Has a novel that was published during the Civil War um, if we read it today, would it have the same impact or we would we respond the same or differently than the original uh, or the readers at the time of its publication? The moral intellectual um, critical approach, sometimes called sociological approach, tries to identify the values, what is considered right or wrong as a behavior, uh, values that are being promoted by the work. How do these values affect us in our community? Reader's response, criticism, um, is probably the easiest approach because it considers the reader as an important element in determining the value of the writing. The value of the story or the poem is not established because the scholars or uh, professors have said that it's a good story, but it's up to the reader to fully attend to that story, read it carefully, and if that story or that poem fails at um, creating an emotional response or 
creating insights for the reader, then it's not the problem of the reader per se. So it is an interaction between the reader and the, and, and the work. Um, we will be covering each of these critical approaches this semester. Um, I will be pairing a specific genre, such as the short story, with formalist criticism, a specific genre, such as the modern novel, to historical criticism, uh, drama to moral intellectual, and we will be um, pairing reader's response with the analysis of poetry.